present. Obviously, the creation of a master tailor. Shirt, tie, shoes, everything speaks of elegance. May I ask where the money comes from to indulge such expensive tastes? I uh, must respectfully refuse to answer that question, Senator. I ask all of you here to look upon one of Fortune's elect. Uh, he is supplied, it seems free of charge, with a wardrobe fit for a king. We know he lives in a luxurious penthouse, and evidently no one presses him for the rent. He is obviously well-nourished. And yet, from whence comes the wherewithal? How does he manage to survive, indeed thrive, without any source of income? Could you enlighten us, Mr. Dorian? I must refuse to answer that question, Senator. Respectfully. I have no further questions, Mr. Dorian. But neither I nor this committee nor the American people are finished with you. Mr. Chairman, I reserve the balance of my time. All right, all right, all right. Turn it over. I think they're due to recess for lunch anyhow. Isn't Frank absolutely magnificent, Dad? <laughs> we have a presidential candidate. Uh, I don't know if he wants it. He wants it. Well, he told me he didn't. He has to say that. It's, it's a matter of form. You mean he has to lie to his wife? <laughs> Especially to his wife. Why? We never held 
held any secrets from each other. Well, you see, when a man becomes president, his uh, wife loses him. I refuse to believe that. No, no, no. The presidency comes between you. And he senses that already. That's why he's protesting to himself that he doesn't want it. But it's all ritual. I want him to become president. He'd make a great president. And I'll do all I can to make him see it. Well, I've been talking to people. Are they impressed? Well, if the convention were tomorrow, he'd be taken very seriously. Oh, but it's a year and a half away. Uh, that's why we have to be careful. I mean, very careful. Oh. Listen to us sitting here plotting. It's like like one of those old Byzantine intrigues. Yes, well, politics never change. Is Frank coming home for lunch? No. He has a date with guess whom? Elizabeth Atwell. Oh, the Dowager Empress of the Washington Press Corps. <laughs> well, our boy has arrived. Really and truly. I must be losing my grip, Senator. I wonder what that means. How long have you been here in Washington? I was appointed by Governor Lansdowne to fill out the remaining year of Carl Averley's term when he died. And then four years ago, I was elected on my own. Four years. And I've never interviewed you. Why should you interview a junior senator from a small western mm -hmm. state? I should have spotted you. You work hard. You do a good job. You're respected on both sides of the aisle. In addition, you also married well. I like to think so. Irma Hurley, smart, attractive, Lou Hurley's daughter. Lou Hurley, formerly Hurley and Bassett. Quite possibly the most prestigious law firm in Washington. Yes, Lou's retired. He's concentrating on my career. And now, this committee. You're making a great many friends. I'm a friendly person. Oh, oh, and does it come over? A nice guy, but no pushover. Smart, decent, idealistic. <laughs> I don't remember, Liz. Did I check my halo at the door when we came in? And this morning, the way you handle that, uh, well, well, he is a punk, isn't he? The contrast between you was simply electrifying. Yes, he's a punk, the worst kind. A protected punk. But we'll find out who's behind him. And I'm sure there's considerable influence and power there. It can reach pretty high. I don't care how high it goes. Al Dorian belongs to me. That man and everything he stands for is an abomination. You mean that. Frank, I've seen them come and go since before you were born. Should you give away your age so readily? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be old, Frank. That means I can dispense wisdom. Such wisdom as? For one thing, we don't elect a man to high office, Frank. What we actually elect is his character. Men run on their records. So what does that mean? A man starts life all over again once he's been chosen. The office works a peculiar chemistry on him. Do you follow me? I think I do. I've seen liberals become conservatives and the other way around. I have seen hawks become doves and also the reverse. So what a man really needs is the character to meet the incredible demands. I think you got it, Frank. Well, thank you. I hate to argue with one so wise and experienced. But surely you admit that appearances can be deceiving. Yes. To some people, but not to all. Not to me. How can you be sure? Did you ever hear of a Roman poet named Alienus? No. He was a minor poet. He wrote, Votus Victus, Oris Rictus. Do you know what that means? No. Literally translated, it has to do with a fixed face and an open mouth. Yes? Actually, it means the look. What look? The look. That's what we gather from the sense of the poem, which just goes on and on. But what look is he talking about? The look you can see on every face if you search deeply. Now, uh, my old Roman poet believed that man is commanded by the gods to tell the truth. I would agree. Therefore, he felt that the mouth offends the gods when it speaks a lie. 
That's one way to think about it. Therefore, the gods brand this, this mouth, this Horus Mendactus, this mouth of a liar, with a look. You haven't told me what kind of look. It's just a look. You know it the moment you see it, that crook on the stand this morning, that, uh, that, that Al Dorian. Does he have the look? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Can you describe it? Well, it, uh... Of course you can't. It's a look without a shape, a a line, a, a form, but it's there. I understand what you mean. I don't see that look on your face, Frank. I hope it never gets there. Hello, Irma, darling. Lou? Well, how'd it go with Liz out well at lunch? Fine. Uh, yeah, what did you talk about? We talked about a very, very obscure Roman poet. You're kidding. What do you call that science of, uh, you know, where you attempt to discover a person's character by examining his face? Uh, physiognomy. Oh, that's not a science. That's a fraud. Well, whatever. Uh, that's what you talked about? All through lunch. Oh, darling. You wasted a golden opportunity. To do what? But this woman is syndicated in 300 newspapers. She, she has a national network spot every night. I know that. This was your golden opportunity to lay out your ideas, your philosophy. But you wasted the entire lunch. I haven't enjoyed a lunch like that in years. Well, you weren't there to enjoy yourself. Oh, wasn't I? Oh, I'm sorry. Dad, talk to uh, him. He's right, Irma. He's what? Now, listen, I've been in politics for 60 years. And as a schoolboy in Kneebridge's, I gave out circulars during the Harding-Cox election. For which side? Oh, both sides. No, I don't know if Frank carefully plans his strategy or just happens to do the right thing by instinct. The right thing? Yes, and now here she is, this uh, mistress of the media with her fantastic clout. And when our Frank meets her for lunch, what do they talk about? Something that's dear to her heart, this uh, phrenology thing. No, physiognomy. Phrenology has to do with bumps on the head. Well, Frank comes off as that rara avis. Uh, that one of a kind. Oh, can you imagine a politician who isn't dying to talk about himself but is actually interested in what's going on in your mind? Frank is not a politician, Dad. He is a statesman. Well, uh, a statesman's a dead politician who was never indicted. <laughs> I uh, should consider getting some work done before dinner. I have some committee reports to go over. I'll, uh, I'll be in the study. Uh, a back offer. What? I may save it. For what? The big one. What big one? (laughs) I don't know yet. What are you talking about, Dad? Well, sooner or later, somewhere down the line, he is going to have to make a deal. Frank? Never. He is going to have to compromise, you know, yield on something, accommodate somebody. But that's not how Frank sees things. What kind of a, a, a deal will he have to make and... With whom? Well, I don't know. But it's out there. It's waiting for him. Surely, Dad, you must have some idea. No, no, dear, I haven't. But out of a clear blue sky, when we least expect it, there'll be a knock on the door, a ring on the phone, and Frank will have to cut off or blow maybe just the tiniest thinnest slice of his integrity. He won't do it. He will. And you'll have to help him. So don't waste your strength on these meaningless little skirmishes. Save it for the war. The war. Yes. It's true. Every day of our lives, we must fight to preserve and protect our integrity. Sailed on all sides by the easy way, the convenient, perhaps the profitable way. And the higher we stand in the world, the stronger the temptation. As an experienced listener, you have already guessed that in the near future, Frank Stoddard is going to have to wheel and deal. With whom? For that, we have a second act. Greek historian.
historian Herodotus who told us that the bitterest pain known to man is to have much knowledge but little power. Today, the situation seems reversed. In so many places, the people are ruled by those who have much power but little knowledge. And here we are in the midst of a story that deals with a man who has power but whose knowledge is yet to be ascertained. Frank? Uh, oh, dinner time? Darling, am I a pain in the neck? How can you ask such a question? Now answer it. Sometimes. I don't mean to be. I know. I just know the country needs a man like you. I'm not thinking about that right now. You're not? Uh, I'm trying not to. But it's there. Yeah? Frank, I want you to make it. It's a long way off, Irma. No, not really. You've got it. What have I got? What are we talking about? The nomination. <laughs> You're forgetting the uh, the primaries, the convention. Oh, no, that'll just be going through the motion. Pretty strenuous motion, if you ask me. You have it. Your problem is not to lose it. You think so? It's in your pocket. You seem so sure. It, it's a matter of timing. Timing? Look, you've come along at a moment when you're the brightest, freshest, most exciting face on the national scene. Ah, thank you, kind lady. <laughs> Darling, please get that and save me the trouble of turning down an invitation. Oh, I've learned how to do that with elegance and finesse. Hello? Is the uh, senator started there? Oh, well, the senator is out just now. May I take a message? Yeah, this is Al Dorian. Al Dorian? And uh, how much you want to bet the senator just came in? Oh, one moment, please. Frank. Well, what do you know? Thank you, my dear. Uh, hello? Yeah. Yeah, hello. Now, what can I do for you? Well, uh, that's what we ought to talk about, Senator. You had your opportunity to talk at the hearing. I mean, yeah, face to face, man to man, and uh, off the record. I don't usually indulge in that kind of conversation. Uh, you're a lawyer. You used to be a DA. You know, you got to give to get. And just what have you got to give? The name of the guy you want. And who might that be? What would I get for the name of the guy that pulls all the strings? That would have to be negotiated at a meeting of the full committee. Now, uh, Senator, I am making a deal with you. I have no authority. I trust you, Senator. You want to meet me tonight? Where? My place, over on the northwest. 2432 Bellison. Around uh, 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock at 2432 Bellison. Nobody else is going to know about this till it's all set, huh? Nobody. Nobody. He wants to see you. It means he wants to make a deal. Frank, it's fantastic. It's to be kept a secret. I have to respect his confidence. I understand. Don't tell anyone. Is anybody there? Anyone home? What's wrong? Dorian, where, where's the light? Wait. Dorian. Oh, Dorian, what, what happened? I, I've been shot. That's what happened. A doctor, where, where's the... Oh, I see it. An emergency number. Dorian, are you... Are you... Uh, hello? Hello, police. Police, listen. A man has been shot at 2432 Bellison. 2432. Get an ambulance here and hurry. You shut your mouth off, didn't you? No, no, believe me, I kept my word. Yeah, yeah. Dorian. Oh, maybe they, maybe they figure they play it safe. Look, don't, don't try to talk. Huh? Save your strength. What, what strength? Man, I'm dying. The ambulance will be here. What are you doing here? Look, save every ounce of strength. Who are you? Who, who, who? Oh, oh, I respectfully refuse to answer because, because, what? Why didn't I want to answer? I can't remember. That's not important right now. I'm trying to remember the name of 
of this guy. And nobody knows him, see? But drugs and girls and, and uh, gambling. He owns it. He, he got all of it, you understand? Look, just, just try to be calm. Uh, who, who are you? What, what are you doing here? I'm, I'm Senator Stoddard. Oh, uh, light and shining armor. I'm going to make you president of the United States. Uh, I'm a bum. But I'm going to make you president. Even if you don't like my shoes, my shirt, my suit. I never said I didn't like them. I'm going to give you something. And you can't give me nothing. I, I'm dying. Dorian, I, can you tell me this man's name? I never squealed in my life. But this yeah, man yeah. killed you, Dorian. You're, yeah. you're dying. You know, just hold on to me. Keep me here. I'll tell you his name. His name is Joe. Joe? Joe what? Joe. Joe. Joe Bizet? Is that is that it, Dorian? Dorian. Dorian. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm okay. Just a little shaky. Uh, you want a drink? Oh, everybody's just just talking about your courage and going in to meet that, that gangster. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a thing, Frank. People are actually saying that you could have been ambushed and killed, too. Look, I, I want to say something to both of you. I I know you both love me, and, and you're completely swept up with the idea that I that I can go all the way. But you can, Frank, you can. People are saying Let's it. Let's put all that aside. Something terrible happened tonight. Do you understand that? Of course. I'm not sure. It seems likely that life has become just a series of, of political maneuvers. Darling, that's not true. Everything's been reduced to a simple consideration. Is it or is it not good for my prospects? That isn't fair. Look, a man was murdered. He may have been a punk, a gangster, a killer, but but he had decided for reasons of his own to cooperate with the United States government. I, I understand. But there were those who said, you shall not do it. And they killed him. They defied the people of the United States. They won't get away with it. I'm going to hunt them down, whoever they are. And not because it's going to be good for my prospects, but because I have no choice. Of course, right. Whether it wins me the presidency or, or costs me the presidency, I'm going to do it. Darling, I I'm sorry. It's just that I get carried away by the... By I know, the... I know. I get carried away myself. It's a bug and it bites you and you itch all over and the only cure is election. But right now I have a personal stake in a murder. And it won't be turned aside. I know, and you shouldn't. Now, if it happens to be good politics at the same time, well, that's so much gravy. <sighs> Lou, you're incorrigible. <laughs> began is just another one of those ho-hum committees. Ride the current wave of law and order sentiment, get a few headlines, and then fade away as all of them do. But on this committee, we have Senator Frank Stoddard, who played it for real and for keeps. Now, it's not going to fade away quietly because there has been a murder, and each of us is outraged as each one of us should be. Senator Stoddard is looking better and better every day. A fresh voice, a fresh face, a breath of fresh air. This is Liz Atwell. Good night. Thank you, Liz. Now, uh, what's that up ahead? I could answer with that old, old gag. No thanks, I just had one. But I didn't. Oh, something wrong with your car? Car's in great shape. Are you okay? In the pink, as they say. <laughs> Why'd you flag me down? Because you're Senator Frank Stoddard. And therefore? I had to see you. About what? 
I waited for you to leave the Senate office building. I followed you. I got ahead of you, pulled over, and trusted to your gentleman's instincts to stop and help a lady in distress. If you wanted to see me so badly, you could have made an appointment. People who make appointments to see you wind up getting killed. That only happened once. What's your name? How long do you have to live with a guy before you can claim to be his common-law wife? I'm not sure. I think seven years, maybe five. Al and I had nine together, so I guess that makes me Justine Dorian. Dorian? Yeah. All right, what do you want to see me about? Uh, step this way, Senator. Let's get a bit further off the road. Wait a minute. What's that? Oh, what a question. Don't you know a pistol when you see one? It's only a twenty-two caliber, but it makes a neat little hole going in and kind of a jagged one going out. I'm going to kill you, Senator. Kill me? But why? You know why. No, I don't. Come on, Senator. I have to spell it out. Why do you want to kill me? Because you killed Al Dorian. Is that why? But wait. We were there. We know that Al Dorian was already dying when Frank Stoddard arrived. Evidently, she doesn't have that information. But she has a gun. And her mind seems to be made up. A pity none of us can tell her she's mistaken. We'll see how well Frank does when I return with Act Three in just a few minutes. Three. There is an entire body of so-called philosophy which insists that the ultimate truth comes from the barrel of a gun. As a premise for a scholarly discussion, it is, of course, highly dubious, but as a practical matter, when one is faced with a physical fact, it becomes a serious debate indeed. And if you are the person without the gun, it's an argument you cannot afford to lose. How can you say I killed El Dorian? <laughs> You're pretty good, you are, the way you put on that injured innocent. But it doesn't make sense. No? Al would be a key witness for the committee. What is there about you? I know you're lying, but that face, that innocent face, those deep blue eyes, so filled with honesty, sincerity. In just a minute, you'll have me crying. What am I lying about? Oh, cut it out. You're talking to me. What am I saying that's making you so angry? We had this argument, Al and I. I said, Al, he knows he's playing a game. And Al said, no, he's a chump. He don't know. What don't I know? Al figured he could shake you down. All he had to do was tell you. And you'd cave in. Tell me what? I said, Al, it's dangerous. You can't fool around with those guys. But Al kept insisting. It'll be private between me and him. Who's going to know? But you had to kill him. Because he knew too much. Please listen to Poor him. Al. Underneath, he was just small time. He didn't realize he was only playing a part. That you were playing a part. What part am I playing? What are you doing on that committee? Who are you kidding? You're there to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. To steer it away from your father-in-law. What did you say? Don't. You take another step. What did you say? I'll shoot. What did you no. say? You're hurting me. What about my father-in-law? Let go of me. Tell me about my father-in-law. Tell me. No. And let go of that gun. I don't need a gun. I've already killed you. I killed you without it. What are you saying? You... You didn't know. I see it now. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Al's dead. That's all that counts. He's dead. 
the two of you. What about my father-in-law? Al told you just before he died. He didn't mention my father-in-law's name. I know that. But the name he did mention should have told you everything. It told me nothing. Joe Bizet. I never heard of it. Neither has anyone else. Joe Bizet. That's not the name. What is it then? Bassett. Joe Bassett. What? You know who Joe Bassett is. No, no, that's impossible. Why is it impossible? Joe Bassett is, was my father-in-law's partner. The famous law firm of Hurley and Bassett. You can't be serious. You can't even be sane. Why not? Lou Hurley and Joe Bassett, two of the most upright... Oh, come on, Bet. Lou Hurley handled the corporations and Joe Bassett took care of the criminals. Not that Lou's people weren't criminals, too. They just stole in a different way. Joe made the great courtroom reputation, the great mouthpiece. I refuse to believe a word of this. All oh, those big mobsters. Joe Bassett saw how he could play his cards in such a way that they would be working for him. You can't prove any of this. And he did. He had enough on everybody to keep them all in line. Prove it. You know I'm telling the truth. Even if you are, which I doubt... Why does Lou have to be involved? Lou knew. He kept his mouth shut and took his teeth. Proof. Proof. Where's your proof? For years, Al Dorian's been the errand boy, the gopher. The connection between Joe Bassett and the guys who get their hands dirty. I insist. Where's the proof? You are the proof. Yeah, you. Twelve years ago, you marry Lou's daughter. Who are you? What are you? Just a, a kid lawyer and nobody on the DA staff in some jackrabbit sheep ranch county. But you get an idea you want to run for your boss's job. Who put up the dough for your campaign? Lou loaned me $5,000. And my wife and I toured the state in my car. Good Lord, you really believe it. You think that's what does it? You shake hands with a couple of apple knockers, you invest a few thousand in some bumper stickers and buttons, and you're in? Who bought the vote? Who twisted the arms? Who called in the favor? I was elected on my platform. Oh, sure, sure. Who got you the editorials, the endorsements? Do you know? Can you even begin to imagine the kind of money that's been spent on you? What ma- Who ordered old Governor Lansdowne to pick you to fill the Senate vacancy when Averly died? I made my reputation as a district attorney who cleaned out organized crime. Sure. And who saw to it that you got the evidence? Who made sure you got the goods on guys they no longer had any use for? All right, go ahead. Tell me why anyone would do it. Why not own a man who might one day be in the White House? How could anyone hope to own me? Senator, one day they might want something very bad. And they'd say to you, Frank, you have to make it happen. Or else would it come out that it was racket money, mob money that supported you all along. I... I don't believe it. Oh, I'm not saying they pull a stunt like that just to fix a traffic ticket. Oh, no, it would have to be something big. And they could maybe only do it once, or maybe they'd never have to do it at all. How do I know you're telling the truth? How do I know it isn't all just a story to... To... To what, Senator? Have I asked you for anything? Am I looking for something? I'm even sorry. Because I can believe you didn't know. And that means you didn't kill Al. But who did? You can find that out. Who knew you were going to meet him? And where? Who knew? Who? Anybody. Frank, well, what do 
you trying to say? Did you tell anybody? Well, why would I tell anyone? Did you? Well, of course not. Not even Lou? Oh, well... Well, what? Uh, I told you not to tell anyone. Well, Lou isn't just anyone. Then you did tell him? Look, he wanted to know where you were going. But I said not to tell anyone. Well, we have no secrets from Lou. Oh, is that a fact? Well, why don't we have any secrets from Lou? We're a married couple. Why can't there be things just between the two of us? Why did you tell him? Because he's my father. But I'm your husband. Where's your first loyalty? Frank, don't put it that way. You didn't answer the question. You have no right to talk to me like that, not after the way I've worked. Worked for what? For your career. Who asked you? Frank, we're under a strain. I think I'm going to go inside right now before you or I say something neither one of us has any business saying and which can never be unsaid. She loves you, Frank. Yeah. What does she know about you, Lou? Well, she thinks I'm the, the greatest dad in the world. Aside from that, what does she know? Aside from that, what is there to know? Everything. The name Al Dorian wanted to give me wasn't Joe Bizet. No? Al was very far gone by then. What he was trying to say was Joe Bassett. Oh. So, Lou, where are we? Well, uh, that all depends. You were part of it with Joe, weren't you? Never a poor man. Well, I guess the answer is you have to have larceny in your heart. That Lou is so easy. So now what do I do? Put my father-in-law and his partner on the witness stand? Yeah, you swore an oath, Frank. So that's what you have to do. You and Joe Bassett. You deny every word. <laughs> of course. And there's nothing on paper anywhere. No, not a soul. <laughs> It would be your word against that of a dead racketeer. He was the only one who knew we were involved. But I could give you a very hot time on that stand. Well, I know that. I might even shake something loose somewhere. Someone sitting in jail or someone who has to make a deal with the cops or plea bargain with some district attorney might put two and two together and come forward. Yes, it's entirely possible. Of course, I would look great doing it. There are people who'd say, is this man so power-hungry he'd even try to railroad his own father-in-law? Look at how he's pistol-whipping that fine, dignified old gentleman. <laughs> he could end my career. Well, that shouldn't stop you. And it would also destroy my wife. Well, that shouldn't stop you either. The history of high office is filled with devastated wives. Now you have your own your job, your duty. It comes down to this. I'm not tough enough or ruthless enough. And you have another alternative. Just forget the whole thing. <laughs> I suppose that is a way out. We've always had graft, crime, corruption. Maybe we always will. And occasionally a hot young crusader comes along and makes a few waves. But it's all froth. Underneath, it's still business as usual. And giving me and Joe a hard time won't get you all that far. I've been out of it for quite a while. Don't Joe is a sick man. And already, new people, and we don't even know who they are, new people are moving in. So you advise me to forget it. It's over, Frank. It was a dim, forgotten, receding past. The murder of Al Dorian is very much in the present. Yeah, that was just kind of a last hurrah. And it was done for your sake. For my sake? Yes. To spare you this trauma. I'm sorry it was botched. He should have been dead before you got there. You were to get away with murder. I know you're a man of ideals to a certain extent. We all are. 
You see, life forces you to make compromises. The minute you make the first one, you begin to die. Lou? You're the only one who can save me. Take it out of my hands. Come forward on your own. Turn yourself in. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. At the same time, you'll be saving yourself. From what? Come here, Lou. To the mirror. See? It's on your face. I never noticed it, but it's there. What is there? The look. What look? Liz Atwell called it Oris Mendactus. The look of the liar. But I saw the same look on Al Dorian's face. Only it gets deeper and wider, and it becomes the look of death. Can't you see it? I, I, I think you're crazy. All the years you worked with Joe Bassett, you knew it was wrong. You tried to break away, and then I came along. Oh, how hard you worked for me, Lou. You saw it as kind of an atonement for the things you did. But it's not enough. You have to do a lot more. Yes, destroy myself. Save yourself. Come forward freely. And that look will disappear. Prove it. Just decide right now to turn yourself over. And watch how that look will fade away. I can't. Go ahead. And then see what happens in the looking glass. I can't, Irma. I, I, I don't want her to know. She'll know. You wouldn't tell her, Frank. Now, now, you wouldn't. No, but you will. You'll have to. If you don't help me, Lou, I'll just walk away from everything. She'll want to know why. I won't say a word. She'll turn to you. Sooner or later, she'll get it out of you. And if she gets it that way, You'll have lost her forever. Uh, Frank. This way is the only way you can keep her. You tell her, Lou. It's what you have to do. And I can see it on your face. You've already decided. You knew all along the moment would come. Daddy. Why are you staring at the glass? What do you see there? Uh, I, I see uh, nothing. Nothing at all, honey. Thank you, Frank. What are you thanking him for, Dad? Well, it's a long story. Do you remember I used to tell you long stories when you were just a little girl? That's what I miss most of all. The stories. Well, darling, tonight, I think I'd like to tell you another story. wild and ironic way, it was as fantastic as any of the fairy tales he told her when she was a child. But unlike the fairy tales, it didn't have a happy ending. But it had a realistic ending. The ending life calls for, but so seldom gets. I shall return shortly. ancients believed in it. To our remote ancestors, men were but materials used by the immortal gods, and they wrote on our faces. They wrote our fears, our fantasies, and our fate. Yes, the face of a human being is an open book, if only you know how to read it. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Carol Titel, Terry Keene, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.